In this video, we're going to be going over parcels. We're going to talk about creating parcels, renumbering and renaming parcels, how to display a map check analysis on the screen, and then also how to create map check reports that we can print out or share. All right, so let's go ahead and go over to Civil 3D. Okay, so right now I just have some lines and arcs in this drawing, and we're going to turn these into parcels. The first step when creating parcels, the first thing that you want to do in Civil 3D is to create a site. So parcels must live on sites. So we're going to right click here and say new. And we're going to call this residential site. Okay, so all I need to do is give it a name. So I'm going to click OK. Okay, now if you went and tried to create parcels before creating a site, Civil 3D would create a dummy site for you called Site 1, which you could then go and rename later. But to save you that hassle, you can just go ahead and create your site ahead of time. All right, so in our Home tab, under the Create Design panel, we're going to go to the Parcel dropdown. And there is an option here for Parcel Creation Tools, where you can create parcels from scratch. I find it easier to draw your line work just using lines and arcs first, and then creating, that, uh, creating parcels from that, because of the fact that when you're drawing your line, you can use things like line by bearing. When you're doing your curves, you can do curve between two lines. Uh, all the tools for lines and curves that Civil 3D has built in, you can use to draw your lines. All right, so we're going to go ahead and say create parcel from objects. I'm going to use a window to select everything here and press enter to finish. And you can see that it's defaulting to that residential site. Uh, if you had not created that site and you wanted to create one, you could always use this button to create a new site. And if you have multiple sites in the drawing, you can use the drop down here and select from those sites. So sites has a lot to it, but the only thing that we need to know in the context of parcels, if objects are on the same site, they can and will interact with each other. Objects that are on different sites do not interact with each other. Okay. All right, so the parcel style is set to property, and the layers are set here to the default layers, both for the parcel itself and for the individual parcel segments. The label style is set to parcel name. I want to see more information than that, so let's go ahead and change that to name, square foot, and acres. And then you have the option to have Civil 3D automatically label your line segments and your curve segments for your parcels. So you won't be able to select this and everything will be grayed out until you tell Civil 3D that you do want to do that by check marking here where it says automatically add segment labels. Once you check mark that, everything here becomes editable. And so I'm going to go ahead and just choose some styles that we've already created. So bearing over distance and distance radius and delta. Okay, and then the last option here, we do want to make sure that it is checkmarked to erase existing entities because when we're done, we're going to have parcels here and we don't want lines and arcs underneath those parcels where we have duplicate objects on top of each other. So make sure that that is checkmarked and then we click OK. All right, and so it created the parcels for us. You can see parcel one, two, and three. Also labeled our lines with our bearing over distance and our curves with our length, radius, and delta label styles. So you can see that Civil 3D can recognize the closed areas here and create these parcels for us automatically. These parcels are also dynamic and what I mean by that is that if I were to for example choose this segment here and take that endpoint and drag it somewhere so it's no longer connected which means we would no longer have a closed area here Civil 3D is going to recognize that and update the parcels accordingly. So if I just click this somewhere in this area here, that closed area is gone. This now becomes one large parcel. So instead of being uh, a little over three acres, this property two is now a little over five acres. Okay. Now, if we want to get that back, we just need to close that off again. Of course, we could always use undo, um, but maybe you've gone and done some other work and undo is not an option. So in that case, we can just pick up our endpoint here. I'll use an endpoint snap to put it back where it was. And as soon as I do that, notice this goes back to 3.84 acres, and we have a different parcel here now. Now, if we'd used undo, this would have gone back to property one, but because of the fact, or I think this was property one and two, but anyway, um, because of the fact that we 
moved this line and created a brand new parcel, it just incremented to the next number. So after your initial creation of your parcels, if you go back and uh, add lines or move lines or things like that for your parcel, uh, the numbers can get skewed. But we'll go over how to renumber those in a little bit here. Uh, Civil 3D makes it very simple to rename and renumber parcels. All right, so the next thing that I want to do, instead of having one large parcel here, parcel 3, which is 3.5 acres, I want to subdivide that into two parcels. Okay. So if I wanted to do that, I could simply use the line command. And I'm going to use a nearest snap so that I can select somewhere along this line and be connected. Okay, doesn't matter where. I'm just going to select somewhere along this line, maybe right here. Okay, and then I'm going to use a nearest snap on the other side so that we have a closed area. So maybe I'll pick right here. Enter to finish. Okay. So remember, right now that's just a line. To turn that into a parcel, I need to add it to that same residential site. So I'm going to go ahead and come here to the parcel dropdown. Say create parcel from objects. Select that line. Press enter to finish selection. And again, the most important part on this screen, if I want it to interact with the rest of these parcels, it needs to be on the same site. If I put this line on a separate site, it would not interact with these parcels and it would become its own separate entity. So Civil 3D should remember our choices from last time, including erase existing entities, which we do want to make sure that that is checkmarked. We don't want a random line sitting underneath one of our parcels here. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And you'll see it subdivides these, and now instead of 3.54, we now have 2.12 acres for property 3, and we now have a new property, property 5. All right, those are the four that I'm going to have. So I want to go ahead and renumber them at this point. So to renumber them, one way to do that is to select the parcel. Now, to select a parcel, you don't select uh, any of the line work. Uh, while it's true that some of these curves or lines may belong to a single parcel, there's others that don't. For example, this segment here, this line, uh, belongs to both property three and property five. So you don't select any of the segments to try and select a parcel. So I'm going to press escape to deselect. To select a parcel, you have to actually select on the label here, on the text. And when I click there, you'll see that the contextual ribbon changes to my parcel ribbon. Okay. And in the modify panel, we have renumber rename. So I'm going to click on that. And it knows that we're on the residential site. And we have options to either renumber or rename. I want to renumber them. So it asks for a starting number and an increment value. So if, for example, you wanted your parcels to start at 101, 102, 103, 104, etc., then you'd put your starting number at 101 and leave the increment value at 1. Uh, maybe you like all even numbers and you want it to start at 100. You put the starting number at 100, the increment value at 2, then it would do 100, 102, 104, etc. All right, so... I just want to rename these starting at one. So we'll say that I'm going to start in the top left here and I'm going to go clockwise. So I want this to be one, two, three, and four. So my starting number is one, my increment value is one. I click OK. And now it's asking for a start point. So basically it's going to let us draw line segments through our parcels. We can draw as many segments as we want depending on how many parcels we have. We don't have to click into every parcel that we want to renumber. So for example, I don't have to click here, and then here, and then here, and then here. The only thing you have to do is make sure that as you're drawing these line segments, that it passes through the parcels that you want to renumber in the order you want to renumber them. So that means I can click right here for my starting point, and it's asking for the end point. All I have to do is make sure that I pass through what I want to be parcel number two before I reach parcel number three. Right? If I came down like this, I would miss this parcel and it would not get numbered the way that I want. But as long as it passes through both of them, I'm going to go ahead and click here. And then I'm asking for an endpoint again, because again, I can make as many of these segments as I want. So now I'm going to come in this direction to the last parcel and click again. When I'm done, when I'm done with that, I'm going to press enter. And notice that it's asking for a start point again. It's started over with the commands, right? Uh, for us, we don't need to do anything else, so we would just press enter. But what this is for, uh, maybe you have several areas that have parcels in them that you're renumbering and you want to renumber them all at the same time. So for example, uh, imagine that we had a mirror image of these parcels over on this side, and we decided that we wanted to start in the parcel here and go counterclockwise to number five, six, seven, and eight. 
Well, you can think of this as though when I pressed enter, I lifted my pencil up off the paper. I can now come over here without worrying about what my line might be going through, and I can click my new starting point and continue on, do my next set of segments. Okay. Again, for us, we just have these here. We're finished, so to finish it, we do have to press enter. And once we do that, I'll press escape to deselect, and you'll see parcel one, parcel two, parcel three, parcel four, renumbered just the way that we want. All right. So next, let's say that for this first property, property one, I wanted to be able to see a map check analysis, right? And I wanted to see that information on the screen here. So with that parcel selected up in the ribbon in our modify panel, I'm going to go to parcel properties. And mine defaulted to the analysis tab. If yours comes up on one of the other tabs, just make sure that you go to the analysis tab. And in there, you'll see we've got inverse analysis, and we also have map check analysis. So I'm going to choose map check analysis. This option here, enable map check across cord. So what that means is that for this property here, we have a curve right here. If that is unchecked, it will measure the length of that curve, and it will use that distance. If this is checked, it will draw an imaginary line from the starting vertex of that curve to the ending vertex of that curve, and it will use that distance across that cord while doing the analysis instead. Also, the default behavior is to process clockwise. And if you want to override that, you can check mark this and process counterclockwise. Civil 3D will also choose a starting point where it's going to start the analysis. And if you want to change that, you can always use this pick box here. When you click on that, it's going to take you into model space. It's going to show you where the first point is using that little green marker there. Kind of looks like an hourglass. And then it also shows you the direction of whichever line you're closest to with your cursor. You can see this is moving clockwise, and that is the analysis that it is making. If you wanted to change that starting point, I'll go ahead and use an endpoint snap and place it at the top here instead. Okay. And so then it changes and the values update here. If I use the pick box, I can even verify that. When I come back in, you'll see our little green marker is now in that location. So I actually want to put it back to the default. So I'm going to do an endpoint snap again right here. And it changes the coordinates back to that location. And so then here on the screen, you can see we have our map check analysis. And if we scroll through here, you see all the different lines and curves. And we get our precision at the end. Go ahead and click OK to get out of here. All right, I'm going to press Escape to deselect. So what if I wanted to see that map check analysis where I could save it externally, then I could print it, email it to somebody, anything like that? Well, to do that, if I expand the residential site here and expand parcels, we were looking at property one. So I'm going to go ahead and select property one. I'm going to right click and go to export analysis. And it's asking for a destination file, so I'm gonna use this button to go and pick a location. And for this project, I'll put it in the reports. And I'm gonna call it map uh, one, since we're doing property one. Okay, and, and you get the same options as you did in the other screen, inverse analysis or map check analysis, and whether or not to measure across the cord or override for counterclockwise. So I'm just gonna click OK to accept all that. And then it creates this file for us. It has all the same information that was on that screen, but now it's in a .txt file. You can see there, .txt, just a normal notepad text type file. All right, I'm gonna close out of that. Now, if you wanted to have more than one in your analysis, you can select multiple. You could use shift select to select a sequential amount of them, right? Th things that are next to each other. Or you could pick and choose. Maybe you just wanted one and three. So you could pick one, hold control on your keyboard and pick three. And you could right click and say export analysis. And that would just have properties one and three. But maybe you've got, you know, 60 or 100 parcels here and you want to get all of them. Instead of having to pick one and scroll through to get to the end to shift click, what you can do is on the header where it says parcels, if you right click there instead and then go to export analysis, that will get all of them. In this case, it's four, but in another case, it could be 104, right? It'll get all of them. 
So we'll click on Export Analysis. Again, we have to say where to save that file. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to save it in the lo same location, but let's call this one Map All. And click OK. And so we have property one, but then when we get to the end of property one, there's property two, and so on. Property three, property four. All in one file. All right, and the last thing we want to show you is maybe you want something a little fancier. You know, maybe you want to have some extra information on there, like your address, your client's address, things like that. So what you could do instead is generate a map check report. Now to do that, we go to our toolbox tab here. It uh, looks like I've already got it expanded, so let me show you where that's at so that you know how to get in there. So in your toolbox tab, if you expand your reports manager and then expand parcel, then a little over halfway down, there's the parcel map check report. You just right click on that and say execute. So again, here you get to choose which parcels you're going to have in your report. Okay. Uh, if you wanted, you could deselect all and go back and select the ones that you want. Or if you want everything uh, and they're all checked, you're just good to go. You can also use select all to make sure that it didn't miss anything if you've got a bunch of them here. So you don't have to scroll through everything. All right, so it looks like this is going to save to a temporary folder in our app data folder. For the purposes of this demonstration, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and click Create Report. And after a second, it should open up in your default browser, this HTML file. Now, you can see here things like prepared by, it says prepare your company name, things like that. Uh, that's because I prepared this with the style that comes right out of the box and nothing is set with Civil 3D. You can go in and change that style for your report and fill in the things with the pertinent information. You can even put your client information in, in that style as well. And then you can see it's a little bit neater and cleaner here. And so you still have your same properties, one, property two, property three, and property four. Okay. And if you did want to save this HTML file, you could save it to a more permanent location uh, so that you have access to it again later. When you're done, you can just click done to get out of here. So that concludes our video on parcels in Civil 3D.